uh, basically I went through the whole protocol, nothing really. It worked a little bit, but it was definitely, it was all sort of palliative. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and they were just sort of hoping to give me a couple, a, a little bit extra time. Uh, and then I got on to a clinical trial uh, for endostatin, which uh, I've been on for a little bit over two years now. Uh, my tumor has been stable for the past two years. Uh, you go and uh, you know, see the doctor every two weeks. They kind of poke you a little bit, make sure that the tumor is not growing. You get a CAT scan every two months. Um, and that's about it. I think the, the, what's good about it is that I, the reason they have all these visits to the doctor is that they're expecting something to happen where all of a sudden I'm going to say I feel miserable, I'm really fatigued, I have you know all, all these horrible symptoms. And that's not really what's happening. Instead, what's happening is I'm going in and saying I feel perfectly fine. Right now, I think the, the main thing I have right now is a little bit more hope that this might be the miracle drug that has come along that could truly treat cancer more like diabetes and become a, a chronic disease where you just give yourself a shot. I think the, the worst thing about for my family, because when I was first diagnosed, uh, they all wanted to do something for me. Uh, they were going to every doctor's appointment with me, trying to do everything uh, with me. Uh, and one, one of my brothers in particular would basically cry throughout the whole uh, you know, sit there and cry in the doctor's lobby. Um, and so I, I basically told them that they should stop coming because they, they were being more of a burden than actually helping out. Uh, so, and then through chemotherapy, I didn't really have incredible side effects or anything like that where they had to sort of take care of me. So I think the, the main thing was that they felt more helpless than I did. I had at least had the chemotherapy. I had something that I was doing that I could sit there and say, you know, at least I'm doing this, I'm, I'm, make, I'm, I'm making an effort, I'm doing something uh, to fight this disease. They couldn't really go out and create a cure for cancer or anything like that. Um, what I did do, or I think one of the things I did to, to help them sort of feel less powerless was we just started doing fundraisers and donating money. And I just think that helped them feel like they, they were at least doing something to fight the disease. One of the, the strange things that happens with cancer survivors is after they're actually truly cured uh, and they get a clean bill, they become even more obsessed with death. They become even more upset about the fact that they had cancer. I think one of the, the things that cancer does to you is a good and a bad thing is it lets you know that you don't have control over your life, but you realize that you can control certain things about your life and how you're going to react to certain things. That's what you have control over, and so um, that's what I, I try to do is control how I react to things more than try to control the situation. My name is Scott Toner. I'm a four-year survivor of neuroendocrine tumor of the pancreas.